There's a long <laughs> article on aerosociety.com. Probably should put the link in the description about BA, yes, our, BAE systems. What's that, Mover? I was going to say, I, I, I saw it from our friend Tim on the Twitter. Uh, uh, Tim's probably in the chat. I saw it. I'm like, man, that's a good article. Let's talk about it. But so, Douglas will, will t tell us so that we're not copyright infringing. Go on. There's a bunch of lead in about the um, information load on pilots. And that goes all the way back to the Century series when they started inventing HUDs to deal with it. Um, their concern is that with some of the modern stuff, like the um, loyal wingmen and AIs flying alongside live pilots, that there's going to be an increase in information overload. They work through some issues in the middle here about um, the gender of AI and whether that will be an issue, which, wow. <laughs> and then they go on to get into, I think, what's the meat of the article here, where they talk about haptic vests and eye tracking, which are both pretty well-developed technologies at this point, with the idea that haptic vests might be used for SA um, in relation to things like the Loyal Wingman drones and eye tracking, where you'd have a button on your HOTAS and just kick it over to now it's tracking your eyes to select information. What do you think, gentlemen? Gawk, you had a lot to say about this when we were talking about it, so uh, I'll let you have the floor. Well, it... It's funny reading through that article. I was like, "Oh, they want to bring Wizos back, <laughs> right?" Because it was talking about having, uh, and we will make fun of this, but like intelligent, uh, some intelligence assisting and filtering what is the most pertinent and useful information to the pilot in any given scenario. Which I think I'm the only one here with uh, two seat experience, and like, if you have a good Wizo, that's actually kind of what happens. Casmo, sorry. Casmo has a whole bunch. How and Casmo, <laughs> you have. I mean, eye tracking. I mean, kind of. The eye. I guess. Has. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I wouldn't call it eye tracking, but no, it, it's different. I think what they're saying, right, is like you like look at something and it flicks a switch for you or whatever, which seems really weird. Yeah. Like I don't know. I just can't fathom that. Like I just happen to look at it and flick. Oh, I didn't mean to put down the landing gear. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Casmo, I mean, was that the case? Like, if you flew with another, it's two pilots, right? The way you guys did it, it wasn't yeah. like. I mean, yeah, but I mean, you're both. You know, one guy's doing one thing and one guy's flying. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I like having another guy in the cockpit, honestly, especially if yeah. you're doing like stuff down low. It's you know, you can manage things better. But I guess what they're saying is AI, then like filtering. I don't like the idea of anyone filtering my stuff, like. I, I I'll decide whether it's pertinent to me or not. Um, I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, I, I understand what they're trying to do. I just, you know, like the typhoon was designed, I think with uh, voice activated like commands and it, they couldn't get it to work. So I'm not saying the technology or the, the idea is bad, but I think we're a ways off from it because if we haven't been able to perfect the voice activated stuff, I mean, the eye stuff I think is even, it, it would be even tougher. I can see this yeah. in, especially with the AI integration, you know, you're talking loyal wingmen and like, cause it's a whole thing, right? They're not just talking about eye tracking and haptic, haptic feedback, but think of it in a, you know, multi-plane engagement beyond visual range. Now you're trying to sort, shoot, track who's hostile, who's friendly. Like, I think you have a, a good opportunity to help you with battlefield situational awareness and knowing kind of where everything is at any given moment. And I think that's yeah. where it helps. That's where a really good Wizzo and like a AESA fully loaded F model Super Hornet. I mean, we, I would do exercises, you know, out in Key West. And I mean, man, flowing cold, you'd have the whole thing suitcase because, you know, I'm I'm just flying, doing formation. I'm kind of watching what he's doing on the radar and the sorting. And I mean, it's it does, it does help. I mean, he's yeah. like my, uh, he's my, he's my AI helper <laughs> back there, you know, filtering the info. Then we round the corner and, uh, you know, a shooter, he tells me to shoot, right. If I'm not, if I'm not well, quick enough, it's not artificial. It's just actual intelligence. It's a human. It's HI. It's human. That's what intelligence I meant. Back there. Actual yeah. intelligence. Yeah. But in the case of the AI, you get the extra gas too. So, <laughs> but you lose the flare mover <laughs> <laughs> again to all the Wizzos watching. That was Gonky's line, it was not me. 
Uh, although I did I, say it, so I own it. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed um, flying with Wizzos. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, sure you did, buddy. Sure you did. Okay, awesome. Any reattacks on that? It's a great article. Go check it out. Yeah. Uh, I just thought it was interesting to talk about because of the eye tracking and, and all that stuff. And uh, boy, technology. Well, dude, I can see it work. Information overload's a real thing, and like very quickly, even in the latest, even in the F with two two people it and the latest and greatest like all it takes is like one little domino and it just you're off the tracks yeah and i wonder the the grade modes right so you know we always you know every system has a failure so <laughs> what happens when it it is you know it gets a smudge and it doesn't right. it thinks you're looking at something and you have to override right. it because it you know you're your walleye because you're looking one way and it's thinking you're looking the other and it's flipping switches for you that you didn't necessarily ask it to. T to me, that would be a, a thing, but I'm sure they have ways around that. I mean, they're engineers that are much smarter than all three of us. What are you doing mover? Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you're looking down, yeah, you got the pedal pack and they're decisions. like, that's when we have problems. Yeah. Right. Exactly. What do you, you know? Doing? The F 35B will auto eject you. <laughs> that's horrible Casmo. you didn't know that no I, that's so no. no this is this is no kidding uh t-bear told me about this when he went and did the sim uh when it first came out and I, it stuck with me the whole time so the f-35 f-35 b vtol vertical takeoff or landing you know it can hover around and do its thing well if it gets itself in a situation where it realizes this is unrecoverable it'll throw the pilot out you know, it's like, see you later, you're out because it anticipates the fact that you know, this is your survival. So, you know, the, the question has always been, how do it know? And what happens when it's wrong? It's a, it's a super <laughs> reliable system, you know. It eats you out of the, the jet. Time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but, it, but no, seriously. A system it, that's supposed to only work in a certain environment and then suddenly just does something on its own. Because like I can see that I get that with the with the the B model because you're in that environment, but yeah, as long as it's not defaulting to like you're at twenty thousand feet and something goes wrong, it's like oh you need to get out of here. Like yeah, have some. No, it's it's just it in that it. yeah sure yeah, it's, it's just sense. when the gear down and it's doing the thing not uh, not not like mm -hmm. Jester. What did I did we did Doug did you just right. do that? Are you moving <laughs> us on?